Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and today we are doing the review on the whole tactic sent by Lefty EDC. Shout out to him. Definitely, definitely go check his channel out. He cracks me up. I've been loving his content, and me and him have been sending knives back and forth. But yeah, awesome dude. You know, and listen, guys, I don't want to get into what studies show or statistics or anything like that. You know, I know a lot of you guys are, you know, sending me the statistics of what his uh, knife purchases are showing us. But, you know, we won't get into that in this video, but you should definitely, at the very least, go sub to his channel, give him a follow, and check out his content. Now, this amazing, amazing piece of machinery is, it, it goes up and beyond. It really does. And if you follow along, you will see why. Now, starting off with this S90V sheep's foot blade beautifully well done that stone wash is amazing i love the stone wash on this knife nice hollow ground blade and beautiful thickness for this edc coupled with the the hollow ground blade nice sharpening choil you see the plunge grind is backed up a little bit so they did give you plenty of meat to sharpen this it looks like it's got a kme or some sort of fixed angled system edge on it which I think is awesome, shows that it's been used and loved on. The machining is, it's insane. It's such good machine work. The, not even just the outside, the scales, which are extremely well done. Nice big hardware. You guys know I love to see that. But this is a liner lock. So it's not a frame lock. And you see all the machining on this side and how, it, you know, it's got different angles. Even if you look under the clip, how the machining is, I mean craziness but when we look inside you can see the machining done for the weight relief it's just one giant pocket which makes this thing very light you know considering then you can see the liner screwed in right there and the clip you know the hidden screw on the inside and that liner goes up to the lockup right here and has a machined detent nub machined onto it or you know however um it's done but it has an adjustable detent so it instead of having a detent ball it has a detent nub and you can see that where that little red is that's a little screw that is makes for an adjustable detent nub now the detent nub is different from the ball and makes insanely good action that is just out of this world let's get into the action then we'll get into how this thing actually works as an edc knife so the jimping on the flipper tab is extremely well done. You see the S90V right there. Now the detent is strong and in a good way though. Uh, but when you put pressure, you know, you can feel that it's got a nice strong detent. But once you break that detent, which is going to be that nub, you know, that dropped into the blade. Once it breaks free from the blade, it, it comes out fast. Now, since it's a detent nub, you don't have to worry about getting past the detent ball. The second it's up on the blade, it's over the detent. So there's no fiddling around with the detent ball or double clutching or anything like that, which makes for you know, not, not just incredible action, but also a nice experience when deploying and closing this knife. It doesn't matter how high you hold it, hold it up onto the, the lock bar. You know, you can hold as high as you possibly want to. It doesn't matter. I like that. That's awesome. But the action itself is very, very addicting. And, you know, it, it's awesome. Very, very nice action. The lock bar is easy to access. It does feel, um, it doesn't feel like it's very strong, meaning it's very easy to push that lock bar over. It doesn't have a lot of tension on it, which it doesn't need it because of the detent nub rather than the detent ball. Since it has the nub, that nub creates a nice strong detent with a beautiful break. Now, when you do unlock it, it is 
absolutely false shut action. Not drop shutty, not shake shutty. It is false shut. And it has an it has nice acoustics too. I love the sound of this thing. Let's see if we can get it on the microphone. Very, very nice. Now, when it is closed, it almost feels like it's sucking itself into the handle when it closes because it's so false shutty that it's it almost feels like it's being like like it's a magnet pulling it in or something the machining on this you know for the blade to handle ratio and just how it's fit and centered it's as centered as a knife can possibly get and it looks so gorgeous how tightly fit that knife is in there there's just something to how tight they can machine a blade in the scales that to me it just gets me going i love it i love it love it love it and the the jimping on the spine feels really good in the hand um it's not too aggressive but it does add traction so does the rest of the scales now i did say in my first impressions that it felt awkward in the hand it and I'm going to, you know, hold, hold true to that. I think it does feel a little awkward in the hand, but I have to stand corrected on it, you know, on how it works, because even though I don't know how I'm trying to say this. So even though just grabbing it, it feels awkward in use, it works and makes sense and it's okay. I mean, it's good. It, uh, it almost, it's like the difference between somebody just squeezing a knife saying, oh man, the ergos suck, right? But then when they use it, it feels really good. So then they, they sound like an idiot or vice versa. Oh, these feel really good. Then you go to cut something with it and it gives you a giant hot spot and hurts your hand. Well, this is kind of like that where it feels kind of awkward. Just me grabbing it. Maybe it's a little short. Maybe it has to do with how it tapers. I don't know, but in use it's very comfortable and it works very, very well. I did find myself, um, use, you know, just not like going like this, but just kind of, you know, using this little spot right there, like in the first impressions, like I said, you know, I did want to test this thing on a brick. Um, so, you know, I wanted to, uh, see, you know, how tough it was, how strong this liner was, you know, you know, when using it on a brick, you know, and I promise you guys, I looked all over for the brick. For some reason, I cannot find that damn brick. So, you know, it's okay. We we had to use cardboard instead. So, but cutting performance is great. This thing, the, the hollow ground blade works very, very well coupled with the thickness of the blade stock. I measured the thickness behind the edge right around maybe a tiny bit under 15 thousandths. So with this blade stock thickness for cutting performance and the height of the blade and just the way the geometry is, it cuts extremely well for an EDC. It passes through materials very, very well. Now, in all honesty, I didn't cut a lot with this thing, but the little bit of cutting I did do, it felt very, very good. And it just, you know, it screams through things. And it's that great size where it's not a large knife. It's not a small knife. It's that happy medium area that a lot of us like. And the Ergos, you know, it does have a little bit of a tapered drop right here. But this flat area right here feels really good in your hand. And, you know, it locks in really good. You don't get a lot of movement. Now, once you place your thumb back there, this little spot right there kind of locks in right there and it feels really good just with these fingers right here. It is very solid in the hand. Now, with utility cuts, you have the tapering drop, which this, it works. You know, like the opposite of kind of, I guess the sway back does, it tapers down, which I do like. So the utility cuts are very very nice and you know you expect it because it's a sheep's foot blade good geometry so utility cuts are extremely nice doesn't matter if you're doing s cuts if you're doing circles or if you're just doing a straight line slice it works 
Great. And it feels good in the hand. You have a lot of leverage through the cut. You have a lot of leverage pushing down and pulling back through the cuts with this you know, medium sized knife. Now I did not sharpen this knife, but I did strop it. Um, it does have what looks like some type of fixed angled system edge that looks very, very nice. It came very sharp. Um, I didn't use it enough to obviously put an edge on it or anything like that, but you know, I hit it on the strop just cause you know, I'm that guy. Um, I used my strop from sharpeningsupplies.com shout out to them this is uh the the strop you see is my favorite strop i have at the moment you can definitely go check out sharpeningsupplies.com they have all your sharpening needs i also have a bunch of stuff linked down below if you want to check it out now the the clip the clip works very very well great machine clip um you know sometimes you're you're a little worried about milled titanium clips because they either knock it out of the park or they don't it's just kind of one of those things either they're crappy or they work great and in this case it works very nice in and out of the pocket very smooth now another thing i really like is that i can get it out of the pocket deployed make my cut and back into the pocket very nice smooth and fast now, some of you guys don't care about that. Some of you guys don't care about how fast you can close your knife and put it back in your pocket or how fast you can deploy it, you know, and that, so it might not concern you, you know, I mean, maybe you're the type of person that, you know, don't mind closing your knife two handed and also with an elbow involved. I don't know, but I like to be able to open my knife, make my cut, get it back in my pocket as smooth as possible. And this knife does that very well. Now. The hardware, like I said, is nice and large. It's very, very well built. The back spacer looks really good. Everything looks beautiful on this thing. But what are some negatives? So one negative right now is that since, like I said, the liner is very easy to disengage. And since it is, I can basically just pinch right here and it's on, it'll unlock. And I don't mean that like, it's not that big of a deal. It's really not. You just got to kind of pay attention. But there was one time I was pinching it like this and I'm basically just pinching and I put pressure on the spine and it kind of closed. There you go. And it closed on me. And I know that has to do with a little bit of torque this way, but it's very light that I see right there. I barely have to do it and I can do that. And it just, so like right now it's locked. And if I just, bam, and it doesn't take much effort to do that. And it's because the pressure of that lock bar is very, very light, which I'm sure helps with that close. Now it's very, very solid. I mean, this thing is rock solid. I did check it and double checked it. It's very solid, but the lock bar is almost too easy to disengage. Now, will that bring you into trouble? It could, when you're cutting, say through something, if you're cutting and like, say if you're, you know, you're cutting through some cardboard and you're in this pinch grip, there is a possibility that you might, you know, just put pressure on this lock bar just a little bit and it could fold. Now, why isn't it that big of a deal? Because you're going to be blocked and pinched right here. You'll feel it. And then because you're cutting, the pressure will push it back into place so it's not that big of a deal it's really not i'm nitpicking obviously and you know it does make incredible action but you just got to know that torquing on this thing at all can lead to it um, unlocking and next thing i don't own one <laughs> These things are incredible. Um, I can't really come up with any other negative, but I will say though that they they they're about four ninety five. That's what I've seen them for online. I'm not sure if that's the price for this exact one, and I got to imagine in the secondary they probably are a lot more expensive. I'm not positive. They're not going to be. I mean, I don't even know how available they are. They're probably not going to be extremely available, but they are, you can still find them. You can get them. You can, I mean, this is the new design from Holt. So I imagine you could probably get them fairly easily if you really wanted one. And 495 is a great 
deal for this knife. I, I'll say it again. I think four ninety five is a great deal. Now, if they're going for the secondary market, double that price. Is it worth that? That's up to you. I mean, I, I you know I don't care what you do with your money. Um, I will say it is a insanely good knife. I mean, I love the the big pivot. I mean, that looks like a T15, T20 or something. Looks like T8s back here. Internal stop pen. Um, ceramic bearings that make insanely good action. This thing, it's top notch. It really is. It is definitely top notch. And it's like I said, it's not a large knife. It is a medium sized knife. I'll do some quick size comparisons and then we'll get out of here. Here is the... PM2, Spyderco PM2. You can see how much bigger it is. Here's my Medford Slimity. You can see the Slimity is a little bit longer than it. Um, here is here is my Tucson TS301. I'm loving this knife, and yeah, amazing, amazing knife right here. Next, um. The TRM Shadow, which you can see, they're almost the same length. The Shadow's a tiny bit longer. But here's a knife that's very similar in size, in my opinion, or not even in my opinion, um, the Quiet Carry Waypoint. They, this is a little, this is thinner, you know, and it feels, you know, slimmer and smaller in the hand because it's so thin, but they do have a similar size, you know, aside from how thin it is, but yeah, there you guys go. Um, I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching lefty. I appreciate you letting me check out some of your knives and peace out y'all.